Hello YouTube, I'm back again with another video. This time I'm going to be doing my third deck profile in one piece, which I'm going to be playing happens to be Blue Boa Hancock. The reason why I decided to play this deck, um, because I'm deciding to tear down my purple blue Kaido and just play regular purple since it's getting more support and I feel like uh, having less life puts you at a real disadvantage here. And I want to make the most out of the cards I own. And I, in the beginning, I didn't really intend to build this deck. But now looking at the cards I had and uh, deciding which would make the deck more creative, interesting, and viable, I feel like these choices are very accurate because it has a ton of blockers. It has a good amount of uh, high ends for just in case. Because but you'd want to make sure not see too many, and you play a lot of events to make use of Bo Hancock's ability. As I'm gonna explain the leader. So how our effect works is that your turn once per turn, um, whenever a character is removed from the field by your effect, if you have five or less cards, you draw a card. Simple as that. And as a, after bringing that up to your attention. We're going to proceed with this deck profile as there's really not much to explain, but the first card, obviously, we're maxing out on uh, Kaya. She's a 1 cost. She's, she's a 2k counter, and on play, um, you draw 2 cards, you trash 2 cards from your hand. We play 4 Trafal Trafalgar Alert, Trafalgar Law, sorry about my uh, voice over here, you guys. Almost had the hiccups. Um, Four Trafalgar logs since it's a it's it's a one cost and it's a blocker so you, it's nice just in case early game whenever you go first you're not gonna be, you might not possibly see too many uh, low costs early in the game but the whole point is to build up as many blockers as you can and in, in order to wait for you to like either see later removal or your high ends. But usually when you're playing like your events, the first thing you want to do is remove the character from the field for you to draw a card, hopefully hope, hoping, hoping that you draw a blocker that which you can play or a 2k counter, in which we're playing several. Um, we're just playing the one garp. It may seem random, but it, it is a nifty card since a lot of our cards allow us to draw two. But how this works, it's not really the best one, but you basically draw two and you place two cards from hand on the bottom. But just in case, because you, you want to have more draw power and it being a 2k counter. Just if you don't like your hand, because just to be here with you guys, chances are you might draw into a lot of bricks. That's why you got to be able to fix your hand as much as you can. For, Fasa for Sasaki, which is a 2k counter. And it's obviously a uh, three cost. Basically, same thing. Shuffle your hand, tire hand. Sometimes you don't need to do that, depending if there's some cards you want to keep. But if you know your hand is just absolute trash, you might want to be able to play this going second. Shuffle your hand, and hopefully you see more two Ks. It was uh, enough bodies or the removal that you need to get rid of the problem card. Um, we're just playing the one Trafalgar Law, so again, it's another 2k counter, but it has the ability during the main, you may return this character to the owner's hand, and if your opponent has 6 or more cards in their hand, your opponent places one card from their hand at the bottom deck, their choice. So, you can choose to play multiple copies, but I want to make more space for draw power, like I said earlier, but I feel like you need the one, because a lot of times you're going to uh, use up your... Uh, other 2k counters but I feel like the one is enough because um you you because if you if you drop too many four drops just to use this card then it's like you're leaving yourself wide open but going to another four cost we're maxing out on the four blocker uh Bowen Hancock she has an interesting ability and a lot of times she's very flexible um you're not only going to use her for blocking, but a lot of times you're going to use her for her whenever she attacks. So basically how it works is that um, if she has a Dawn on her, 
or when she's attacking or on block and if you have five cards or less you draw a card so this will play an important is an important key card this will play an important part of the deck just in case uh, you need to draw more cards to see um, your best cards as quickly as possible draw into more blockers um, but in this deck I feel like the more blockers have the more removal uh, you have that you increase your op, your chance of overwhelming the opponents was giving you more advantage so another four cost we're playing is four Bastille Hawkins kind of similar to Boa Hancock but it only works unless if you unless you have three or less cards in your hand so basically how it works on block if you have three or less cards um, this card gains a thousand power and is but this is after you draw a card so basically you draw the card first and once that resolves this card gains a thousand power on block so our last four that we're playing is two dracula mihawk similar to kaya just in case you you want if you don't if you, if you feel like you want to have something in hand for for countering or one to attack with but basically how it works is if he has a dawn and when he attacks you literally draw two cards same thing like how you draw two cards trash two cards from hand and we're making sure not to play too many five cards so we're just playing three extra so may not be the best i feel like there's no reason to max on this card so basically how this works you get to look at the top five cards from the top of your deck and place at the top or bottom in any order so this is it helps you see your high end whenever you whenever you have enough dawn for next turn or you hopefully want to see it and be able to see into your removal for later um if your opponent decides something 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 stronger after or if you know there's a card on field that may not be able to kill you next turn that you know could be a problem you decide which card that you want and for next turn if you have the the removal for it or if you have if you have the high and that will like be able to overcome the competition then chances are you are like swiftly uh, like be able to like just be able to make a comeback and retrieving more removal and helping you get back to like where you left off essentially but because this deck again relies on seeing as much removal as you can seeing as many blockers or being able to see your high end if you have enough down for next turn but this will make a huge difference but i feel like maxing out isn't really the best solution because you want to make sure that you can draw into those cards as well so our last three uh, or our our last five uh, body five like five body five cost body happens to be Porkaz D Ace, which is another blocker. Only three of essentially um, similar to Gar, but basically on play as well, But on top of being a blocker, you draw two cards and you place two cards um, from the top or bottom in any order. And now for our high end, uh, we're playing two Dracula Mihawk. The reason why we're playing this, not only does he allow you to draw a card, but for eight Dawn, he is a 10k body. So this will help put a lot of pressure amongst your opponent, as well as being able to wait to see another high end. And then this increased odds of you seeing at least seeing two high ends or even more depending how well you save up your dawn or how you properly uh manage it but this increase this actually is the good is a perfect ratio in case you want to be able to have at least more than one 10k body on on the field so this this, this increases the odds of you having to see a second decade whether it be a mother maybe may whether maybe another mihawk or one of your other 10 bodies and speaking of 10 bodies we're playing we're max we're not maxing out but we're playing three blue kaido which this one on play um you can place up to one of your characters opponents uh characters that cost 
eight or less, and one of your opponents, the characters that cost three or less to their hand. So two characters, one that's either eight or less, or one that's three or less. Although it isn't strong, it's the fact that it's a strong body and, the, and it basically synergizes with Bo Hancock in case you have five cards or less. So not only to have, have not only enabling you to have a big body, but allowing to draw an extra extra card, like I mentioned, with the with the combine with if you combine it with Mihawk and your other 10k bodies that I might have for removal. But there isn't really that many uh, characters that, that have removal, but this card, but having Having this on board actually gives the card a purpose. Another card that gives the deck a purpose is our other 10 cost blue Kaido, which on play, if your opponent has three or less life, you draw four cards. So on top of drawing like an extra card with Boa Hancock, um, you're essentially increasing your hand even more and giving you enough counters, giving you enough blockers, enough removal and you want to be able to see your plays as best you can and giving you more options on how to solidify your board as well as, as well as trying to remove your opponent's board sorry remove your opponent's board and now we're finally going to our events we're playing the three cost we're playing sorry we're playing three copies of the zero cost gum gum rain so which is worth it because it, you can you may trash one card from the hand and up to one of your leader characters Gain 3,000 pod power during that battle, and on top of that, whenever this card is triggered, you can return you up to one character with a cost of two or less to the owner's hand. Whether that may be your Kaya's, in case you want to draw more cards, or a two or a, a two or low cost on the field that may be a problem to you, whether it's on your opponent's field. Or just again, just basically trying to use the effect of your your characters. So for another event, we're playing the four cost, three thousand worlds. Basically, you get to place up to one character with a cost of five or less at the bottom of the owner, of the owner's deck, and if it's triggered, you could place up to one character on from the field on the bottom of the owner's deck that costs three or less. And for our, our we're maxing out on our six cost. The reason being is because we can essentially get rid of any character on the field. So whether we know it's a problem and we want to just get a right gear, even if we can't be if we know it's active, we can't be able to attack over it and we have to wait while it's rested. Your best bet is to play Red Rock as to why I'm maxing out on it. But explaining on the during the main, you return the character, any character to the bottom of its owner's deck. And when it's triggered, you can return up to your one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less to the owner's deck. So we're playing, essentially we're playing a lot of triggers with this deck, whether it may be your events or like whatever card we need. Uh, fortunately, and I'm checking out, yeah, we have no characters that have trigger that I see. So your, your, your best bet is like, if you're, if you're planning on playing triggers, is use these events. So although they may be a brick but just in case you know they're gonna be a brick and then and then your opponent attacks your life and and one of them happens to be the life card, of course you wanna be able to trigger them during your opponent's turn. That way you can be able to like decrease their board during their turn so you have a chance to be able to retaliate. And this gives the deck more of a purpose more reason to actually play more offenses because not only are we playing blockers to, to to increase our defense but we have removal which can be activated during our opponent's turn so the blockers give you time although they give you time to stall they ensure that it helps you set up your board carefully so that you can be able to see our high end later or you can be able to get rid of the problem or you can add more dawn to your leader to overwhelm the competition and obviously we're just going to do our last event up because, up because i've been going too long on this video um we're playing three copies of gravity blade raging tiger which uh during the main you can place up to two characters with a cost of six or less to the bottom of the owner's the owner's deck in any order which i don't really think about i don't care too much but how this works is that on trigger if this card is triggered, you could place up to one character with a cost of five or less 
into the bottom of the owner's deck but since it doesn't mention the order whatsoever but overall you guys uh trust me i've been playing with this deck really fun deck you, you probably should you guys probably should try it up if you're something if you're trying something that is uh like outside the meta because personally you guys i did promise myself i wouldn't really be, really be so reliant on playing meta because not only is, not only is it so expensive um you're risking losing uh a lot of money as well as putting a deck that might eventually get in the future and you want to make the most out of it you want to be able to have a chance to actually place the deck as much as you can so that you can actually be fond of the cards that you own but at the same time you want to make use of it because if, if if your deck somehow gets hit and you spend a lot of money on the card you're gonna have deep regrets and trust and believe you guys um you won't be able to get to use as much as you thought you would because um the whole purpose of having a deck is to be able to have strong cards that can be able to like stack up against your opponent and give the deck um a chance to be able to operate the way it should but if that key card like for example even though gecko moria should be banned if a card like moria were to be limited or possibly banned i don't know because i feel like that that's 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 that that's black's only uh useful card in my opinion that's literally one of the few cards that can actually get them a huge board that actually makes black relevant but if moria were to be limited or banned personally i feel like black would be ir uh, would probably be irrelevant but at the same time it's like unless they make cards similar to gecko moria but like with effects are either nerfed or have some sort of limitation so you want to make sure your deck doesn't have, doesn't get restricted or limited by the ban list as much as possible so you can be able to play and feel free to like enjoy your play style and sometimes it's just best to be innovative you just got to figure out the card choices the ratios and what your what your game plan is what your win condition is with this deck and i managed to figure it out myself Although it may be hard for other players to understand, but since I own the deck, I'm, I'm fully aware how to pilot it. But that's something you guys need to learn for yourself and figure it out. So that your opponent does not try to figure out your deck. So that you have ways of knowing how to play the deck to keep your opponent off guard. And keep, keep them off track of your strategy so that it only applies to you. So only you know your strategies. That way it becomes harder for your opponent to actually like decipher what's um you're like what's in your hand what's what what, what your what card you're gonna use what your card you're gonna use to finish them off or what are other options you have that your opponent hasn't discovered yet but i've been going way too long this video you guys Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to check for more upcoming content later in the future. Be sure to check your notifications. Comment, like, subscribe. Thank you.